how do jellyfish sting you? Have you ever thought about that? I think about it constantly. They have tiny cells along their uh, tentacles. Go ahead and, and, and say that among your friends. They'll think you're really cool. They, they have these uh, cells called nematocysts in their tentacles that have little barbs, little spring-loaded syringes inside. And when it comes into physical contact with something else, those spring-loaded syringes launch out and pierce into another creature and inject some venom. They're venomous. But how does something so tiny get into your skin? It's a myth that harvest Daddy long legs, who have the ultimate dad bod, kind of like this, they can bite you and they, they're the most venomous spider. Their, their fangs can't even make it through your skin. So, how can nematocysts, those little barbs that are even smaller, make it into your skin and through it? Well, it's because nematocysts, when they fire, they pull 5 million G. They accelerate from zero to around 20 meters per second in just 700 nanoseconds, which puts gigapascals of pressure at the tips of these little barbs, and it forces itself into your skin. Isn't evolution amazing? Giga, nano, million, nemo, all words that are in the same paragraph that I just said. I don't think that really makes my point. Yes. And welcome to another edition of Because Science Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all of your comments, questions, and correction, corrections and address them in a much more casual format. See? I can mess up. I can, it's much more casual here than in the void. I can do anything in here. <laughs> what? It's upside down. Casual! So on the last episode of Because Science, I wanted to figure out whether or not movie-style drifting is actually fast and furious. Now, using some testing on an actual racetrack with an actual drift car and a professional drift racer and some physics, we determined that in almost all scenarios, drifting is in fact not fast. It is almost always slower. But what did you have to say? Our first comment comes from Caden Bemis, who says, there are certain tactics, I said there are certain tactics that you always have to employ in any racing movie, like NOS and a sick V-neck and drifting, but uh, Caden Bemis says, how about like shifting 20 times in multiple jump cuts? <laughs> That actually annoys me. I mean, I, I don't mind the jump cut so much in films because it implies speed. It's like visual shorthand for saying that something is happening quickly. But what really annoys me is that if you watch the Fast and the Furious films, they speed up their footage. And they speed up the footage when they're drifting around corners. Which only proves my point. They're the biggest pop culture car franchise on the planet, aside from cars, maybe. Shut up. They have access to any car and the best drivers in the world and they still have to speed up their footage. Why don't you just go fast? Fast is smoothness around a track. Drifting looks a lot more violent so it looks faster, but if you have to speed it up, come on, Vin. If it is your real name, it's not. Our next comment comes from Error, name Univaluable. Univaluable. Am I missing something to that? You still upset that Thanos killed your brother? Yes. I am. Our next comment comes from MLG Big Bossu, who says, obviously dr Big Boss. Big Boss. Metal Gear. Obviously drifting makes me faster, that's how I win in Mario Kart. Now that's kind of a weird thing, right? In almost all video games that are racing games that aren't actual racing games, utilize drifting to make you go faster around a track. And Mario Kart 8, specifically, you will lose if you don't drift. I don't know why game developers chose that to make drifting actually faster. I think it's probably to just add another layer of complexity onto the gameplay, like an extra button that you have to press. It's adding one more thing that advanced players have to do so you therefore can go a little bit faster. Maybe that's where some of the confusion comes from as well in terms of pop culture. It's like, no, drifting is fast. I did it in Mario Kart. Well, let's a no. Oh, you can't see it, but my feet are dancing. Our next comment comes from Viola James, or Viola. But Kyle, can you say fast in the Furious film franchise five times fast? Fast in the Furious film franchise. Fast in the Furious film franchise. Damn! 
Yeah! I really thought I could do it. Fast and the Furious film franchise. 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 Don't use the other take. Our next comment comes from the Dark Eye Mobile who says Kyle's gonna have tire poisoning. Okay. This is something that you do not see in the Fast and the Furious films for obvious reasons, because uh, it's dirty and gross. But when you are drifting, the tires are under so much force that the tires are destroying themselves. There's so much friction, so much sliding, that rubber is being thrown off of the tires. And not just in big pieces, but in small particles that go into the smoke that goes into your face. If you drift with the windows down or without a helmet on, you will be plastered by tire particles. If you look closely in the video, you can see I kind of have speckles on my face, and that is actual tire rubber. You never see that because movies are clean. But in reality, if you're drifting, drifting is not only slow, it is dirty. I blew my nose and black stuff came out. Didn't I? It was gross. It was in my ears. I inhaled some. <coughs> but I'm sure it's probably nothing serious. <laughs> But the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode, I gotta give to Warland Writer, who says, A lot! But basically, he, is, he or she is saying, I had a discussion about drifting with a friend of mine recently who said that although you can't go as fast drifting in turns, you can always make sharper turns, which can turn out quicker if the distance lost is greater than the actual speed loss. And thus, so she claimed, drifting on a regular racetrack or on a highway is slower because it was designed to make regular turns at high speeds. A city has much sharper turns, and thus in a city, it would make, av it, would make it advantageous to drift. However, before she turns up and starts spreading her lies, I want to debunk that and then Warland Rider goes on to do just that with a lot of math that I didn't have a lot of time to check but looks pretty good to me. Warland Rider, you are indeed a super near. Yeah! But of course, I'm not always right. So what did I get wrong last week? Our first correction comes from Quote Cannon, who says, I know you backed up your findings later with other numbers, but aren't three laps nowhere near enough to give accurate results? Yes, you're absolutely correct. I wanted to do more than three laps, or at least three, for each normal and drifting style of driving. But I've got to be totally honest with you here. This is just sometimes how production works. We're not a TV show. We're just making YouTube videos. And it wasn't my track. We were there filming an episode with Donut Media. It wasn't even our camera team. So we did what we could do. And uh, the tires on the second drift lap exploded, <laughs> so we couldn't do more. Based on our testing, I think our results indicate the right direction, and the professional drift racer, Odi Bakchis, who uh, was driving me around, he said from his experience, drifting is always slower, but as many of you asked, and we didn't really address in the video, yes, it is far more furious. Our next correction comes from frequent commenter Michael Berthlison, who says, isn't the number in VIN number unnecessary since VIN is already vehicle identification number? I was making a joke, Michael. If I just wrote VIN, it would have been better. You're right. Do you walk up to people who say ATM machine and punch them because you're from the Department of Redundancy Department? It's fine, you're technically correct the best kind of correct, aside from awesomely correct, which is getting the right answer and then dunking. Woo! I feel like that's something Terry Crews could do. Our next correction is the main correction, and it comes from a number of commenters who all say, okay, Drifting may be slower on a track or on normal streets, but if you had to make sharp hairpin turns, wouldn't drifting be faster because you could maintain your momentum through the turn and direct yourself around it and then keep going? Okay, so this is where I think it gets a little bit complicated. If you use rally cars, which drift all the time during races, as an example, it makes what we're talking about a little bit different. Rally tracks are designed to be drifted on and they have loose gravel and dirt so you're going to lose traction anyway, so you're going to want to drift anyway to maintain your speed. Now, if you took a normal car on a rally track and didn't drift, you are going to be really slow. Similarly, if you took a rally car on a normal track and drifted around the entire thing, you are going to be slower than a normal car taking the best lines through those turns. 
So of course, like all these videos, it gets more complicated than I can get into in a few minutes, but it depends on the car, depends on the surface. However, in the Fast and the Furious film franchise, I think most of the racing, most of the fleeing from the most electrifying man in sports entertainment today happens on the streets. And therefore, on the streets, you wanna maintain as much traction as possible and minimize drifting. Because as we know, street dollars win. My Vin Diesel sounds more like Sylvester Stallone trying to be Emperor Palpatine. I think you'll find the deflector shields quite operational when the friends arrive. Our next correction comes from Laura Qualio, who gets a little bit more into what we are talking about with going around turns. It's also very important to take into account the racing surface. In rally racing, the surface is very loose, so the maximum acceleration the rally cars can produce is reduced, placing a higher importance on conserving the velocity you bring into the turn, resulting in some turns being taken in a similar style to drifting. So this goes back to the complications we are talking about again, but let's get a little bit more into it. Now, if you are on a surface like gravel, if you were in a normal car and you weren't gonna drift around a corner, it's going to take a long time because you have less friction to slow all the way down, get around the turn, and then accelerate all the way up to speed again because you're losing so much traction on that gravel, which is why cars like rally cars would rather take the middle ground and maintain some speed in the turn and it's, it's saving some time. But if you were on a normal track, the time that it would take you to slow all the way down and then speed all the way back up around a turn is less than the time it would take you to drift because you get better traction on that solid street uh, pavement. So again, in almost all situations, drifting will be slower unless you were a rally car making a hairpin turn, which doesn't really happen in the Fast and the Furious film franchise, or at least it doesn't really fit with what we think drifting is. But the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode, I gotta give to Christopher Teeley, or Teal, who says the International Space Station is drifting through space 74 times faster than the fastest recorded Formula One speed. In fact, atmospheric drag slows it down. So we want less friction rather than more friction. So yeah, drifting is better, Kyle. Well, I mean, we don't want it to go too fast or else it'll fling out into space and everyone aboard will die. Oh, but you put a, you put a song in here, okay. Drifting through a black ink sky, I'm drifting in a tin box, yeah. A flat earth theory is a lie, I can see it from my tin box. Congratulations, Christopher. You are indeed a super nerd. Ah, from my tin box. Now, if you are already subscribed to Alpha at projectalpha.com, you already know what the next episode of Because Science is gonna be because you've already seen it today. Because you got it two days earlier than everyone else and you got other premium Nerdist and Geek and Sundry content like this show, the space program, and our other debate show, Natural Selection, where Dan Casey and I, very funny man, debate science versus fiction. We have been debating wasps versus Ant-Man, doctors versus Doctor Who. It's ridiculous and great. You should check it out because only through Alpha can you vote. I know I sounded like Yoda, but forget it. But in case you haven't yet subscribed to Alpha, the next episode of Because Science is going to be what the other fatal flaw in the Death Star is. Ooh, ooh. That's right, in this week's episode of Because Science, I'm digging into the physics of the Death Star's super laser to uncover a fatal flaw that isn't the one that I think everyone knows. It's something a lot more subtle. And by subtle, I mean more interesting and able to kill everyone on board just as well. So go watch the latest episode of Because Science if you haven't yet, and leave me all your comments, questions, and corrections at facebook.com slash because science, youtube.com slash because science, and at because science on Instagram and Twitter, because I know all of those handles. And there's also a subreddit, R. Kyle Hill. Sometimes I pop in. And don't forget, sell your myth, but never buy it.